Hello and welcome to Chapter 6, Lesson 2, Properties of Parallelograms. We're going to try and go through this video a little more quickly, and there will be times when you need to pause the video to copy something down, um, just so that we're not using up all the video time waiting on you to write stuff down. So, we're going to jump right in. Our first objective here is to prove and apply properties of parallelograms, focusing on the application part of that. And then we are mainly going to focus in this lesson on using properties of parallelograms to solve problems. So it's important that we understand what a parallelogram is. Any polygon with four sides is considered a quadrilateral. Four sides makes it a quadrilateral. However, some quadrilaterals have special properties. These special quadrilaterals are given their own names. The first one we're going to look at is called a parallelogram. Parallelogram is actually your vocab word for this lesson. So hopefully you have that filled out in your vocab notebook as well. But here's the definition I want you to have for a quadrilateral um, that's called a parallelogram. Parallelogram is a quadrilateral with parallel opposite sides. So in a parallelogram, opposite sides are parallel given to us by our definition. And there's a symbol we can use for parallelograms, and that's just a small parallelogram shape. Okay, you may not draw that perfectly yet, but as long as you're getting close, we'll know what you mean. Okay, now this next part um, is taking part of something from your notes, and I'm going to show you what the notes one looks like so you can kind of compare that and make sure you fill that in correctly. Okay, your notes page looks like this, and you'll see this chart with all this empty space and the corresponding pictures. These are your properties of a parallelogram. Now, here's what I want you to know. This is where we're probably going to have to pause the video to make sure you get time to copy this down, but I'm also going to tell you what page you can find that on of your textbook. If you go to page 403, you'll find these, and then in just a minute I'm going to give you that last one from your list on a different page, and it's from a different page of your book. And so I'm going to want you to copy down this information entirely for each one of these properties, but I'm just going to go over the basics in the video. So if you need to pause the video, go ahead, or you can again look at page 403. Here are your main properties of parallelograms. That means all parallelograms have these qualities, these properties. In a parallelogram, opposite sides are congruent also. These markings mean they're congruent. In a parallelogram, opposite angles are congruent. Again, opposite angles are congruent. In a parallelogram, consecutive angles are supplementary. And in a parallelogram, if we have one right angle, the other three are also right. So all four are right angles as long as one is. We do have another property of parallelograms involving diagonals, and that's that if we have a parallelogram, or in all parallelograms, the diagonals bisect each other. That means they intersect at the midpoint of the diagonals. And then we also uh, have this extra one not given to you in your notes, but it is important to recognize in a parallelogram, the diagonal, one diagonal creates a pair of congruent triangles, two congruent triangles. All right, so these next problems we're going to work on solving are going to use these different properties that we have been naming off, and I'll just run down them quickly for you to listen to. In a parallelogram, opposite sides are congruent. In a parallelogram, opposite angles are congruent. In a parallelogram, consecutive angles are supplementary. And in a parallelogram, if one right angle is given, then all three or all four right angles are are there and then also in a parallelogram diagonals bisect each other so we're gonna work on example one first we are given quite a bit of information so these different pieces of information are going to be useful to us at different times we know that DE is 74 millimeters I'm gonna go ahead and write that in sorry I tried to color code that let me go back we know that DG, part of this diagonal, is 31 millimeters. And we know that the measure of angle FCD, so this angle, is 42 degrees. So the first thing we're going to look at is finding the length of CF. Now, the reason that we are given DE is so that we can find CF because it is the opposite side. So CF is also the same as DE, since they're congruent, which means that it's 74 millimeters. Not a lot of work to do there. All right, next one, we're going to find the measure of angle EFC. 
we are told that DCF is 42 degrees and EFC is this angle here. So that's what we're looking for. These are consecutive angles in a parallelogram, and one of your properties about consecutive angles states that consecutive angles are supplementary. So all I have to do is 180 minus this 42 degree angle, and that gives me 138 degrees for the measure of angle EFC. This would have to be 138 because I took that away from 180 because they're supposed to be supplementary. Lastly, for DF, DF is the full diagonal. DG is this part of the diagonal. Remember that in parallelograms, diagonals bisect each other. And the word bisect means to cut into two equal parts. So if DG is 31, then FG is also 31 millimeters. So DF is equal to 31 plus 31, or 2 times 31, which is 62 millimeters. Again, DG is actually half of that diagonal since they bisect each other. And that means this is 31 and that's 31, giving you 62. All right, we're going to go ahead and do some more problem solving using these different things that we know about parallelograms. In example two, we are told that this is a parallelogram. Sorry, there you can see it. This is a parallelogram. We want to find each given measure. So first they want us to find YZ. YZ is this 8A minus 4 expression. It's a good thing that they give you the opposite side, 6A plus 10. Since opposite sides are congruent, that means 8A minus 4 equals 6A plus 10. In order to solve this, we subtract 6A from both sides. And add 4 to both sides. And lastly, divide by 2. So the value of A, in this case, is 7. But that's not what you're supposed to find. We don't stop with that. We want the value of YZ. So we're going to plug in 7 for A and subtract 4. 8 times 7 is 56. When I subtract 4, that is 52. So yz equals 52. Okay? Then they want you to find the measure of angle z. Measure of angle z is here. We're given the expression 9b plus 2. And then they tell you angle w is 18b minus 11. They give you consecutive angles w and z. Remember that consecutive angles are supplementary. That means their measures should add up to 180. So we're going to have to write this equation. 9b plus 2 plus 18b minus 11 equals 180. I'm going to let you guys solve that. You'll need to pause the video to give yourself enough time. But we're going to combine like terms here and here and here and here. To make it easier first, solve for b, and then we're going to plug it back into this expression to find the value of that angle measure. Okay, if you need more time, go ahead and pause, but otherwise, this is what we should get. b equals 7, and once we plug that in for the measure of angle z, sorry, measure of angle z, we're going to plug in 7 for b and get this. 9 times 7 plus 2, which is 63 plus 2, which is 65 degrees. So the measure of angle Z is 65 degrees. All right, in example 3, we are given another parallelogram, and this time they use the diagonals, so we're going to want to remember that the diagonals bisect each other, and we're just going to find these measures. JG is part of this diagonal EG. FH is the entire other diagonal, so we're going to do these separate parts a little bit differently but we're using the same property of parallelograms that the diagonals bisect each other. Remember, that means they split each other in half. So to find JG, we're going to use this and realize that 3W and W plus 8 are both half of the full diagonal. That means they are equal or congruent to each other in length. So we can say 3W equals W plus 8 and solve for W. And if you work it out like I have here, we should get that W equals 4. And if W equals 4, and we're supposed to find the length of JG, we're going to plug it back into this expression. Instead of W plus 8, we'll just write 4 plus 8, which is 12. 
To find FH, we're going to use the other diagonal. Remember that the diagonals bisect each other. We're still going to say that this part is equal to this part. So I can say 4z minus 9 equals 2z, because they are congruent to each other. I'm still going to solve for z that way. We get the z is 4.5. And now in order to find fh, though, I'm going to plug this into both parts, or plug it into one part, and double it. So I'm going to use this expression, because it's shorter and easier to do. 2 times z becomes 2 times 4.5, which is 9. So jh is 9. That would mean that fj is also 9. Therefore, fh is 9 plus 9. Or 18. All right, let's see if we can get through this last part. In example four, we are going to be doing some work with parallelograms in the coordinate plane. And for the sake of time, we're probably only going to do one of these. But I've made the grid lines for the x-axis and y-axis a little bit bolder. There's x, there's y. So it's easier to see. Okay, in order to do this problem, here's what you need to what you need to realize. You're given three vertices of parallelogram J, K, L, M. The order of these letters is very important because the order of these letters tells you what order to follow when you are labeling the figure. So J, K, L are in consecutive order. M has to be, come after L. So the first thing to do is to plot these points. And I'm going to pause the video and then show you what they look like once we've plotted all four or all three, I'm sorry. All right, J is down here, K, and then L. M has to be somewhere in this region. Remember, the order states that we would go in order from J to K to L to M. So M has to be in this region somewhere over here. I'm even going to just take a highlighter and just kind of indicate it's somewhere in that area because it has to follow that same pattern in a parallelogram shape. But remember that if I were to connect these sides, opposite sides are parallel, and opposite sides are congruent. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use the short side KL to figure out where M needs to be over here by looking at the slope of KL and that length. And so it's easily calculated by just doing your rise over run slope. So we're going to go up 1, 2, 3, 4, over 1, 2, 3, 4. If I follow that same pattern, up 4, over 4, from point J, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, we realize point M has to go right there. And so we get these coordinates for point M. 7, negative 4. And you found that just by counting your um, rise over run to make it the same as the opposite side. All right, we're not going to do part B. Um, we'll come back and hopefully show you some more like that in class if you have more questions. But we do want to finish out the video with this, all right? And I'm actually going to give you instructions on this, but have you do this before you come to class on your own, and I will show you what you should get when you get here. In each of these cells of your table, I want you to draw a figure in this case a parallelogram, with the markings that are represented by this given property. So you need to draw a parallelogram showing the opposite sides are parallel, that's what that symbol means. Then again draw the same kind of parallelogram but mark the opposite sides as congruent. Then a parallelogram with the opposite angles marked as congruent. And then a parallelogram with the consecutive angles marked as supplementary. And look back at the picture that was given earlier in the notes for that one. That shows you a really easy way to do that. So you're also going to write an equation with that one to show that they are supplementary. And then also show a diagram that shows that the diagonals bisect each other. And that kind of finishes up our notes for today. Got almost everything in. Um, but make sure you have filled this out before you get to class.